What's up, NFL fans? I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and don't forget to check out and purchase your copy of our latest football game plan book, Stiff Arming Football Myths. We have these available in both PDF and paperback form. Welcome to Football Game Plans Talking with TD. I'm your host, Teron Davenport. All right, talking with TD. Here we go. Another receiver. I used to play the position, so you know I have to bring in as many as I can. This is a guy, I'm going to tell you like this. He's taken a, a longer route to the NFL, but he's about to get there. And this is a guy that, if you look at him, He's a really good physical specimen. We're going to go to Maryland. We're going to bring in wide receiver Dion Long. Dion, what's good, man? What's good, man? How you doing? I'm doing well. And, you know, one of the things that, that I want to do just right off the top, let's, let's clear the air on this. I mean, for whatever reason, because of people being lazy and, and not actually looking into what's behind different things, they say that you have character issues. And they, they, they look at some of the different schools that you went to and say that, oh, it's because of character. It is because of character. In my book, I, I'm going to say it's because of loyalty. But I want you to go ahead and, and clear the air on that and talk about some of the different schools you went to and how you arrived at Maryland. I mean, from since day one, since I graduated from uh, from high school, you know what I'm saying, I've always been that guy to take the extra mile and put that work in. So instead of me graduating in June of 2009, I graduated in January of 2009 to attend spring ball at the University of West Virginia, or West Virginia University, if you will. So, um, you know what I'm saying? Things happened. I didn't get the SAT score. I needed to qualify to play NCAA ball. So I went to Hargate Military Academy. Um, stayed focused there. Got, got extra, took extra classes there. Um, had good grades there. Number one prep player in the nation. You know what I'm saying? I put it all on the line as, as well, as well as everywhere else out there. So I, that was my first uh, part of the military academy, in which I enrolled at the University of West Virginia at, uh, in 2010. So after that, I um, stayed there for a little bit, went through went through a couple no-padded practices with the team. And woo, woo, woo. once I realized that things weren't going as me and the head coach discussed, um, you know what I'm saying? I had options to get out I had options to get out of there. Basically I was making moves that I was comfortable with. I felt deceived and I felt like the head coach didn't didn't do what he agreed and he came in my living room, sat there and told me that I can be that outside threat that they were looking for to uh add that wrinkle into their offense. When he didn't let me do that, he didn't let me stretch the field. So I felt deceived when I had a hundred more offers and guys coming at me, I'm being loyal to him. You know what I'm saying? Telling him that I'm a mountaineer. Telling them that I'm a mountaineer. I'm going to play going to play in West Virginia like I said I was going to do. Okay, so then that, that happens. I go to University of New Mexico, sit out a year, um, then play that following year, tore it up. Um, coach got fired. You know what I'm saying? Then in turn, I went to a junior college, so I wouldn't have to sit out a year. Regardless, I was going to go wherever he was going. However, the U.S. offense, I wouldn't have had to put as much time into that. I could have I could teach the other players and things of that nature. So following that, I had another, what, 70 offers coming at me again, coming out of junior college. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling them, I'm a Turk. I'm a Turk. I made that commitment to be a Turk, so I'm going to be a Turk. I'm a Turk. So that's why I came back home and played for Maryland. I already knew the offense. Coach Lotz was here. My family was here. And that's why I came back home. And that's, that's, sort, of, that's sort of how it went. And when people say, people say that's a character thing, I don't feel like it's a character thing. I just feel like I just feel like the, those were the those were the right moves at the right time. So that's what that's why I made them. You know, Dion, I'm gonna say it's a character thing, but I'm not gonna say it's a character thing on the negative side of it. I'm gonna say it's on the positive side. You showed loyalty. You stuck to Coach Loxley, even though you got all these offers. And I mean we could go back and look at what you did at, at New Mexico. 47 receptions, 809 yards, four touchdowns. And we could also bring up how you led all JUCO wide receivers at Iowa Western, 100 receptions, 1,600 yards, 25 TDs. I watched some of the, the film from when you were there, and it, w it was stupid. You definitely balled out. All the offers, you ended up at Maryland. Coach Loxley is there with you. And then you end up playing 
uh, on the opposite side of, of Stefan Diggs. So talk a little bit about your relationship with him. I watched you guys interact at, at Pro Day, and, you know, it was really cool to see two top prospects in the program have the relationship that you guys have. Talk a little bit about that. Man, since day one, man, it's been me, him, my boy Ricardo Young. We all we all had that we all had that dream to play ball together at Maryland. So we all we all wanted to go to Maryland. Of course, Ricardo playing the quarterback, and me and Steph playing the wide receivers. But um, things didn't work out that way. Fortunately, he didn't get the opportunity to uh, show that he was show that he was a great quarterback. But um, that's 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 sort of what brought us close with my friend Ricardo Young. I met him through Ricardo, um, and just seeing seeing that passion he brought to the game, and seeing that athleticism that he had, you know what I'm saying? We uh we we clicked from day one. I played. I'm older than him, so I played against his good council teams. Um, that he really didn't. He really didn't. He wasn't on the field yet until that following year. That's when he. That's when he broke out. So I, I played against him a little bit. He played a couple snaps. I played against him a little bit, but. I was always older than him, but that relationship that we had, we just built it. We built it over the years. Um, then, as you know, we broke our legs together. We got super close. Then we needed each other for a lot of stuff. Um, pushed each other in the weight room. Pushed each other when we got back on the practice field, and just we just hit it, hit it hard every day, every day in the summer. Rain, you know, it didn't matter. We was trying to get out there. He had the same five for that game that I have, and that's that's sort of what what, what brought us together. Now, before we get into more about Pro Day and the Combine, I want to digress back to high school. You went to a school that produced a lot of pros- project, excuse me, prospects. Yes, Vernon Davis, Josh Cribbs, Aurelius Ben, Vontae Davis. Yes, but your coach said that you were the best athlete that he's ever coached, Coach Jeffries. Talk a little bit about just how you were able to get into the, the football program and I, I wanna touch on your your past with, with boxing and how okay. having having hands like that, how that helps you at the line of scrimmage as a wide receiver to get off press coverage. Well yeah, I used to box my stepdad had me into boxing when I was just I was about uh six years old. Didn't really like it but was always good at it. Was always a competitor. And uh boxing boxing so it's sorta of like boxing. When you're coming off the line and a, and a cornerback has his hands up, sort of like a street fight. Whoever gets to whoever first is going to win. He jams me, he slows down the time middle route. I beat him, I enhance, I enhance the, uh, what I want to say, the percentage of a completion of a pass. So that's how boxing, that's how boxing comes into play. Also, also stamina, um, agility, swiftness, things like that. And um, like you said, High school, man, it was it was just a blessing to be able to see those guys, see the dedication they put in the football and the work that they put in to actually get to the next level. And being able to play behind those guys, I'm not going to say that it was good to not get in the game and ride the bench until about my 10th grade year, the end of my 10th grade year. But just seeing those guys, their work ethic and the things that they did, even even the way they put their pads on. Because I, I never played football. So when I first got there, you know what I'm saying, I idolized a lot of those guys. It really has been Nate Bussey. Um, guys guys that you don't even know about that were great players that, that came through there. So um, that was huge. To see film on Vernon Davis, to see film on Josh Cribs, Marcus Wimbush, guys like that. Um, that was just huge. I had I had big shoes to fill. So. Yeah, but you filled them. And, and as we went over, your, your route to Maryland. So let's talk about the combine. Uh, you were one of the guys that were there. Uh, saw some interesting things where, where you, you made it a point to, to talk to some of the head coaches. How was that combine experience, getting up at 3 in the morning and having to, to go through the testing and, and the medical side of it and just the interviews? What was that experience like? Um, Patience. All about patience. You know what I'm saying? Guys guys were there complaining like, this is unnecessary, this is this, this is that. I mean, but... The point is, they're they're trying they're trying to get all the information they can get on us to give us the best opportunity that we have. So it's patience, sort of like when I went to all those schools. It's patience, it's patience. It's just it's just staying the course and just keeping 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 what's that what's that uh just just remembering why you're there. You're there, you're there to perform on this certain day, so everything else everything else doesn't even matter. 
so you, you talked a little bit about your your 40 and, and just the the issue with the starts how they felt that you were rolling into the starts and you said that the guy that was that was starting you at the time he was uh kind of kind of new to it can you talk about just just your speed i mean i've watched you play i see a 4-4 guy or on the field Unfortunately, you know, at the combine, you were in the four or five range. But talk about yeah. your speed mm-hmm. and and how that translates onto the field, and especially in the slot position outside, just what you're able to do. Well, the way I see it is, the way I see it is, you got guys in the way when make a bench four hundred pounds or squat five hundred pounds, but can't block a soul. Mm-hmm. And then you got the guys, then you got the guys that are fastest, fastest lightning on the track, and then slow on the field or fast for 40 yards and don't have game speed. You know what I'm saying? And the game is, and the game is different. It's hard to explain it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I've always been a 4-4 four, four guy. You know, I'm 4-3 at times at, 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 at a certain point. And even on the track, I'm 10-7 in the 100. Um, I was 7th in the nation in the 55-meter dash for for the whole indoor season, running 6-4. You know what I'm saying? I've always been that guy. I'm not making excuses, but during the season, you know what I'm saying? I had a little growing little growing injury messing with me a little bit. I mean, but they'll 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 see that coming up in these in these um workouts that I have. I have a workout for the Ravens on the twenty first. I'll uh I'll look to show it show my agility a little bit, show my speed a little bit. Hopefully let me stretch the field a little bit more deep. And um they'll see that once once I get into a camp and one on ones come, they'll see they'll see that I can create separation and they'll see that I can pull away from guys, you know what I'm saying? There's yeah, I can do that. And you know that's the whole thing. The combine, the the workout part of it, I think, is something that really just makes you go back and cross check. That's what I always do. Um, yeah. For me personally, going to the combine, the best thing I like about it is getting to meet you guys, you know, and talk to you guys one on one. Because that's when you get a feel for what type of person a guy is. You could get a feel for what his motivation is, his drive. Yeah. And I know that, that you, being a new, newly becoming a, a father, I'm sure that you have a, a oh, newfound yeah. motivation coming into yeah. the NFL, right? Yeah, that's been one of the best things, man. Since I got home from the combine, I just, you know, sort of took him away from his mom for a couple of weeks, let him live with me. That's actually, actually, my first time doing it since the season. Right after the season, I had to leave to go train for the combine. So this is actually my first time spending two, three, four weeks with my son, you know, back-to-back in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Take him to work out with me, let him run around the field while I'm getting at work. And just, just introducing him to different guys and letting him be around guys that's playing football instead of having him with his mom, you know? That's right. Toughen him up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned working out for the combine at the pro day. I, I thought I heard you say that that you were working out with Exos in in, in uh, the Bay Area. Yeah, I was working out with Exos in uh, Frisco in Texas. Nice, nice. How how was the yeah. training there? I mean, there's so many guys that, that worked out there. I actually know one of the trainers from San Diego, Brett Calloway. Yeah. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Man, there's there's so many guys that that come out of that that training and, and kill the workouts and things like that. So yeah. talk about the competitive nature of working out with so many other top prospects. Um, it's competitive. I actually, I actually did better. I actually did better at the, uh, at the facility when I was doing my um, bench press and things like that than I did at the combat. So it's just a, it's just a, uh, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know, man. I feel like I should have, I should have way better numbers, but I feel like that doesn't define, that doesn't define a player. You got guys that can do that all day, all day in the paint, man. You got guys that can jump a 30, 38, but what you going to do when you get on that field? What you going to do when that guy's in front of you? You know what I'm saying? So I feel like guys, some guys are more athletic than what their combine results show. Yeah, there's just that's, a different. That's, that's how I feel. Yeah, on the field, it's just a different experience. I, I know exactly what you mean, and it, I mean you have guys. You look at Troy Palomalo; he just retired, and this is a guy that off the field, all everybody says is he's such a nice guy. But you see him on the field, and he wants to kill people. You know what I'm saying? So exactly. it's exactly it, it's exactly. just a, a thing that happens that once you you get on that field. So I definitely feel what you're saying. Uh, we talked a lot about about you as a person. Let's talk about you as a player because uh, some of the things that that I've seen at, at Maryland, um, 
I, I don't think you really got to shine in, in the exact way that you're able to. Uh, you know, I noticed they didn't have you in the return game, but I, I saw that in the past. Yeah. You're definitely yeah. able to uh, to help out there. So talk about that, and just talk about your, your toughness and, and just the mindset that you have, the shorthandedness that will allow you to be a really outstanding slot receiver in the NFL as well. Well, as a return guy, you know I return punts and I return kicks at uh at New Mexico. I did do it at Iowa Western because I had a little I had a little guy that looked up to me. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was it was basically only me and him that was the returners. So I kind of just I kind of just let him take over that duty because he didn't really play much receiver. So I kind of let him take over that duty, let him get the punt returns and the kick returns. So I really didn't do it at Iowa Western. Once I got to Maryland, Steph was already there. And they, uh, Will likely was there. So I was like the three deep, you know what I'm saying? So I really didn't do it in Maryland either. But, I mean, I, I could return kicks. I return kicks in New Mexico. I return punts in New Mexico. I could return kicks. I could even play. I played on all special teams in New Mexico. Um, that's fun to me. Any way that I can make a play and help my team better, I, I, I want to be on the field as much as possible. You have the and, toughness, um, the mindset. You know, you're able to, to make catches in traffic. So... How about bumping inside and playing slot? What, what's your your take on that? Oh, that's that's nothing. That's nothing new to me, man. Lots of locks move me around in the slot. They put me a lot. They put me in the slot a lot in JUCO. But um, only thing different is the blocking. That's the only thing different. You gotta go in there. You gotta you gotta take on the Terrell studs. But the way I feel, as long as you get as long as you get in his way, if he run you over, as long as you long as you long as you hit him. <laughs> Then you slowing them down. That's the way I feel. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes as a receiver, you got to be a bump in the road for those big outside you linebackers. To. You got to. But then in them passing situations, man, <laughs> I ain't going to say nothing, but I don't, think, I don't think he could come out. I don't think he could come out there and cover me. Well, yeah, that's that's when it, he's, he's playing in your world in that case. And that just another thing that I wanted to bring up is a lot of guys – come into the NFL and, and there's still technique that needs to be refined. Uh, some guys mm-hmm. more than others. Mm-hmm. You were fortunate enough to A, have a guy with just as much ability on the other side, but most importantly at University of Maryland you had a guy, and we talked at the pro day about it, man, an absolute technician as your coach. A guy who was able to get every mm-hmm. ounce of, of his athletic ability to show up on the field because of how much he knew the, the wide receiver position. And that's Keenan McCardle. Yes. So before I let you yes, go, sir. just talk about your relationship with Coach Keenan and how much of an advantage it is to have a coach like that that was, you know, a long-time NFL wide receiver. Um, I mean, if I had to choose one word, I'd say uh, dedication. He's dedicated to that game as if he's still about to go out there and play on Sunday. If I was if I was to go up there at 11 p.m., he's probably still in there right now. Only only one car to facility, he's probably still in there right now. And inside inside receiver, outside receiver, you know he he knows he knows his stuff. And I sort of I sort of put on display a lot of stuff he told me at the East West Shrine game. You know what I'm saying? Not peeking out of your routes. Um, not not looking too early for the ball because it slows you down on your fade route. Because once you get once you get better competition, because everybody's good, everybody's gonna be good at that next level. It's the little things, it's the little things that you gotta do to to beat to beat that defender. No doubt. So, uh, he really he really hopped, he really hopped on that. You know what I'm saying? He was a uh, he's an all the time guy. If you see him doing it one time, he's he's doing it every day. He's not gonna he ain't gonna, he's not gonna take a day off. And that's basically that's basically what he preaches: consistency, consistency, consistency. That's what the game's all about, consistency. So, Dion, man, I appreciate you coming on. This is a conversation I definitely wanted to have because, like I said, you impressed me at your pro day. Uh, I think, yeah, nothing but the best for you is ahead. I will definitely be at the Ravens pro day uh, at at your workout there. So i definitely touch base with you there, man. I hope everything goes well between now and and the end of the, the month and, into the next season, man. We'll see where you end up. I know there's attraction for multiple teams. You know, Bill Belichick, folks, Bill Belichick was at the, the Maryland Pro Day, and he spent time talking to Dion's head coach. You know it was about him. He liked the cleats. That was a, a joke that you had. So 
hey man i wish you the best thanks for coming on and definitely uh, we'll catch up at a later date man thanks for having me if you, if you need if you want to ask me anything any any time off the record whatever you want to do just hit this call my man i appreciate that that wraps up this edition of Talking with TD. Be sure to check out all of my interview segments at footballgameplan.com slash talkingwithtd. If you have any questions or people you want me to sit down with, hit me up on Twitter at tdavenport underscore NFL.